Hello YouTubers. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about um, an interesting aspect in software development, uh, specifically speaking when it comes to about to um, uh, handling exceptions. Uh, a lot of people may or may not be frustrated with the amount of noise that uh, the try-catch block may cause uh, when they're trying to handle all the potential exceptions that may occur while they're trying to execute a certain operation. Um, so for instance, let's say you're trying to retrieve a student record from a database, but you also want to make sure that your input parameter is in good shape, the structure of, the, you validate the input parameter, whether you're searching by an ID or a name or whatever uh, the parameter you're searching with, you, you want to make sure you handle all your dependency exceptions uh, in terms of, you know, database connection failure, you know, some concurrency, update exceptions, and all these kind of levels of exception handling and the more exceptions uh, that you have, the exception handling you have in your software, uh, the more defensive uh, your software becomes, the more um, um, resilient it becomes against all potential cases. So exception handling is important, but from a code readability perspective, it could be a little bit noisy, especially when you just want to see what the logic is, not necessarily all the possible edge cases. Edge cases, which are the exceptions uh, that we're uh, programming against, should be just that, edge cases that if I only want to see them, I should go to a particular place in my code uh, in a standardized way to see all the different um, situations, all the different cases that I'm trying to handle instead of it just being in, in front of me all the time. So I'm going to show you here a little bit of um, uh, pattern that I have just recently developed uh, that uh, might help you with this problem. This is an existing project um, uh, me and my friends are working on. It's uh, it's called the Estimizer project. It's basically, you know, it's, it's working with uh, profiles and such. And um, what what this function basically is, this is a profile service, which is a service class, and it does all business logic. And as you can see here, there's a remove profile by ID async, and there's retrieve profile by ID async. And you're passing in the profile ID, you're making sure that the profile already exists, and then you're returning whatever the profile is, and then on the controller level you're dealing with you know, profile not found exception, you translate that into 404. People who have been following up with uh, the my series and the fundamentals of building ASP.NET Core applications uh, might be more familiar with this um, with this pattern. <clears throat> Anyways, so um, the problem here as you can see is that there's a lot of catching that's happening in here, right? There's also the same pattern that's happening in here. In fact, the same exceptions that we're catching in here are very similar to the same exceptions that we're catching here. And they may be different, there may be the same and some other functions. Whatever the case may be, they seem to be like this only is the logic that I care about. But I still want to have this thing here to be to build a resilient software, to be able to handle all these different cases and be more verbose when it comes about the errors that happened and the logging should tell me where and why and what and all these uh, different kinds of questions that I need answered when I'm trying to trace to trace an issue in production. So <clears throat> if you look on the right side here, um, my team and I have had a hab have had a habit of breaking you know into bar partial classes the things that we can abstract away. To make sure that our logic is a lot simpler uh, when when you're trying to validate like I don't really care about you're validating an ID how you're validating it it doesn't matter I just want to know that you're validating an ID you're verifying that the the record actually exists in the in the database and then you're deleting the record uh, once you know that it actually exists so <clears throat> so we have this pattern of breaking things apart and all that but the problem here is, is that, like I said, we want to get rid of all that. So what, it, what we can do, you can go to your um, exceptions uh, partial class. So in here, if you can see, there's nested. Uh, Visual Studio does really this really cool thing with nested uh, files. So you, are, you know that you are within the profile service, right? And you know that this is logic that belongs to the profile service, specifically targeting exceptions and validations and whatnot. You can go in here and, and build a delegate, right? This is a delegate. 
And this delegate basically needs to confirm to the same return type, not necessarily the input parameter, but the return type that your function is using, right? So if you go to the profile service here, the return type is value task profile, right? So I'm just gonna go back here and say value task. Let's do control period, pull in the references, and then I'm gonna say profile, control period again, pull in the models. And then this is a function returning profile function. So it's just a, a very generic description for a delegate uh, about a, a, a function that returns a value task of a profile. That's really all there it is. It's just a function that doesn't take, it doesn't matter what kind of input parameters it's taking, it just returns a value task of a profile, right? Under that, and this is where all the magic happens, I'm going to build in another function, private async value task of a profile that is called try catch. So my function here is called, it's a private function, it's called try catch, and it takes in that returning profile function as input parameter, like that delegate it takes that as an input parameter and then let's give it a name. It's less than 120 characters, so that's fine. We're going to keep it on the same line and that's that. And then I'm just going to list in the same exceptions that I'm trying to handle in both methods the exact same way. So if you do try and then tap twice, it'll just build the block for you. But I'm just going to go into my profile service here real quick and then I'm going to copy all that code. And then I'm going to go put that code right here. So, so these are all the exceptions that I'm trying to handle. There's some of them that need references. Let me just do control period, pull that in. So these are all the exceptions. I copied those from the old method. I put it in here. And then all I have to do is just go and say return await returning profile function with the um, uh, open close parentheses, right? So this is a very generic function, actually. This is a try catch that takes in a function that confirms to a particular return type. And then it does all the try catching that's happening. And this is very particular to that service. Now, what we can do, since we are handling the same kinds of exceptions, we can go in here and completely get rid of all that junk. So we can throw away literally all that stuff. And what we can do instead, we could do a fat arrow function and then go and say try catch and then another async method. And then I'm going to move all, all my curly brackets, all of that inside um, uh, this try catch, right? The only thing I'm missing here is basically to remove this guy out. Just take this guy out. And then now I'm just going to pull this guy. I'm actually on the fence with leaving that in here or just pulling it a little bit back. I'm leaning towards pulling it back. But if people want to do it like that, that's up to them. I also think doing it like this is a better option, right? Or, or a, a an option. I personally just leaning towards keeping it this way. So what happened here? My function, basically, I still can handle all the... Um, exceptions that I want to uh, handle but at the same time I don't have to deal with all that noise right I could literally do the exact same thing since the function returns the same thing so I'm just gonna go in here and do the exact same thing I'm just gonna go and say try catch and then async and then I'm gonna throw away all that stuff that I don't need like this and just close this with a parents and then grab that guy back a little bit and throw away the async in here. The exact same thing. Look at, at the code, how it looks now. It's a lot cleaner. Okay, you're handling the exceptions. You're doing all the things you need to do. Uh, but as soon as I go to the service layer, I know that I'm handling, uh, I know that this is the logic that I'm working on without having to be distracted by all that noise right? The try catch noise. Now, don't just take my word for it, right? This is a very vigorously test driven um, uh, project. So let's go ahead and run all the tests. 
and let's make sure that all these tests actually uh, pass. So let's go ahead and just run that and all the tests are passing, right? So that basically uh, assures you that you could literally get rid of all that try catch block. You could handle as many exceptions as you want without hurting the readability of your code without hurting the readability of your code. This is still a raw concept that I'm trying to run in my head. Um, I haven't seen anyone use that concept before. Um, so if you run into a similar situation or you've tried something like that before, please feel free to reach out, ask any questions. If you think this is helpful for you, please go ahead and use it um, and tell me how was your experience using that kind of logic. Um, it's pretty straightforward, really. You're just building a generic function, defining a delegate. Some people don't even have to define the delegate. You could use a func, right? You could use a func and you define your return type and whatever you're passing into that func is going to be the case. Sure, you could do that or you could just use delegates. Either way, it's fine. You're still handling your exceptions, uh, the, the creation and logging of your exceptions. And your code is so much cleaner and so much better and much, much more readable than it was before. If you really want to see the difference, if I do control uh, Z in here real quick, this is the difference here for you. If you go, yeah, just like that. So look at the difference here. This, this function is literally from 26 to 34 versus a function that's over maybe 20 lines, maybe 15 lines of code. It's so much easier and so much simpler and you can just look at the function and know exactly what it's doing. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and uh, I'd love to hear your feedback and I'll see you in another video. Thank you for watching.